Hello, my lovely friend, and welcome to the Soul Care Intuitive Podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Grubbs, and in this podcast, we're going to show you that you're not just ordinary, you're extraordinary. I never had any spiritual experiences as a child, and I did not discover my own psychic abilities until my late 30s. I love to share all that I have learned to show you that we all already have these skills inside of us, just screaming to be let loose. So if you're ready to awaken your soul, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Hello, my lovely friend. Welcome to episode two of the Soul Care Intuitive Podcast. In this episode today, I want to dive into the time between my father being killed and me stepping into my spiritual gifts. It was a really hard time for me and one that I'm not super proud of, but also one that I am proud of because it brought me to where I am today. When my father was killed, it was November of 2014 and it was the Monday before Thanksgiving and he was pushing my daughter in her stroller to what I believe was to take her to get something to eat. Now at the time he was walking in a desert area because it had not been built with buildings or anything yet. It was just a a piece of land that had nothing on it. And so he was walking up in the desert area and there was a woman who was late for work and instead of waiting in traffic, it came about in court that she was weaving in and out of traffic and speeding. When she got to the light, she drove her car into the desert and ran my dad over. And my dad only had a second or two to react. And in that moment, he pushed my daughter, who was 17 months old at the time, he pushed her out of the way and he stood there and took the blow. And he only had seconds to react, but his mind immediately knew to save my daughter. And she drove off. And my father was left on the side of the road to die. And there were a lot of people that pulled over to help and render aid to my father. Um, He had had his veteran's hat on. My dad was a veteran in the United States Army. And so a lot of people rushed to help him and my daughter and there was the reason I bring up the veteran is because there was another veteran that had stopped and I just I remember him telling me that he was a veteran and he felt a kinship to my dad and so it it was really nice to have that moment to know that my dad wasn't alone on the side of the road he had people there but she drove off knowing that she killed him and that's something that took me a long time to get over. Um, It caused me a lot of pain to think about my dad in those final seconds and knowing that he was going to die. So she drove off and where I live, it was all over the news. Like you could not have escaped it. There was no way. There was a description of her car of her uh, partial license plate. There was people that tried to chase her down, but she was driving so fast she got away. This happened the Monday before Thanksgiving. And instead of doing the right thing and just turning herself in, she went and got herself a lawyer. And the lawyer went on television to the media stations to say that she had hired him and that she wasn't going to turn herself in until after Thanksgiving so that she could be with her family. I was planning funeral arrangements for my father, but she gets to stay home and be with her family for Thanksgiving, and that was something that was really hard for me at the time. I've since worked on forgiveness, and I'm going to save that for another episode because that's a deep dive episode, a more emotional episode, but it was really hard for me at that time. I was so full of anger, like how dare you kill someone who no longer can take a breath into their lungs, but you are going to have your lawyer come on TV and say, yeah, she knows what she did, but she's going to turn herself in after Thanksgiving to be with her family. That, That played in my mind over and over and over again for probably two years. 
So after my father died, I felt a huge void. Like I felt like I couldn't breathe anymore. My, my dad was my best friend. We did everything together. He was the funniest, most amazing dad, the most amazing guy. Most, if not all of my friends love my dad, knew my dad. My childhood friends still call him dad and did then. They call him dad. He is their dad. And so the day he was killed, after we left the hospital, my partner at the time was driving and I said a silent prayer in my head to him. I said, dad, if you can hear me, leave me signs and I will know they're from you. Now, then at that moment, I wasn't psychic. I, I couldn't do mediumship. I, I didn't even know that it was a possibility for me because I thought you had to be born with those gifts in order to even do them. But in my mind, in that moment, I just said a prayer to him and, and was praying that he could hear me. And I look over and there's a huge white van that drives by with the word dad in big, huge red letters. And it said, dad's bail bonds. And I took that as a sign that he heard me. And then from there, my dad started leaving me hearts everywhere all the time. And he even leaves them for my friends who send me messages and pictures with hearts that my dad leaves them. Even when I'm in another country, I recently went to Europe for a week or two with my mom and we were finding hearts on the ground there. So no matter where I am, my dad sends me hearts. I knew in that moment that my dad had heard me. I think that's what started me on this journey. That, that one split second decision to say a prayer in my head to my dad, please leave me signs and I will always know they're from you. I remember I would go into his room. He, he lived with me at the time and I would go into his room and lay on the ground because I didn't want to touch anything. I didn't want the smell of him to go away. And I would lay on the ground and I would talk to him and I would hear responses in my head looking back, but I never ever thought they were from him. I thought they were my own mind. And maybe a lot of it was because I was so deep in my grief. Now that I'm a professional psychic medium, I know that when you're in your grief, it's very difficult to receive messages, to understand what you're getting. It's very difficult to connect to spirit. So maybe at the time it was 90% me, 10% him, but I would lay on the ground and talk to him, even though I wasn't a psychic, I wasn't a medium, but something inside me felt like I could still understand him. I could still connect to him. There were some points where when my daughter was with her dad, obviously I didn't do it when she was with me, but I would take a leave PM the minute I walked in the door because I didn't want to feel anything. I was so, so deep in a void that I didn't want to feel anything. I refused to feel anything. I remember my breaking point came when the normal dose of taking three of those Aleve PMs didn't work. And so then I took two more and it worked enough to get me to sleep, but I woke up at like two or three in the morning. And again, because my father's in the military, I have his flag encased in my room. And I woke up at two or three in the morning. I felt like utter garbage. My stomach hurt, my head hurt. I felt guilty, I felt shame. I felt sadness, I felt anger. And when I looked up at his flag, I just started bawling and crying because I felt like I was letting him down. And I felt like I was letting myself down. And that's the moment, like that was my absolute rock bottom. And I knew I had to make a change. I knew I had to heal myself, not only for my daughter, for me, but I wanted to do it for my life. I needed to get my life back. And... I felt like I wanted to connect to my dad and to hear him and to understand him better. I mean, I was getting the hearts on the ground everywhere all the time. So I knew he was communicating with me, but I wanted to communicate with him for real. I wanted to feel him and talk to him and experience him, be able to know that he's near me and feel him and understand what that energy is and feel it. And I had made the decision to start looking into mediumship. I started looking into psychic classes and I, I thought I was really 
spinning my wheels. I'm like, this is not going to go anywhere because all you ever see or all you ever hear people talk about are mediums and psychics that have been that way their whole life. They were born that way. They always had those abilities. I was looking for mentors and teachers who were in the same position as me. Like I'm having this mediumship psychic ability due to a really traumatic, traumatic event, open up gifts in my life open up this yearning that wanted me to find these gifts. And I've got bills to pay. I've got a daughter to take care of. I've got a job to go to. It's, you know, I was at the time pushing 40 and I had to not only deal with life and struggle with life, but now I've got this spiritual side of me that's trying to open up these psychic gifts, these mediumistic gifts that are trying to open up. I've got friends that I have known for 40 years never knew me as a psychic. And now all of a sudden I'm a psychic. I'm a medium. I can do these things. And it was just super awkward. So afraid to tell anybody, but it took me about two years to be able to even want to feel anything after my dad died. I just, I lost a ton of weight. I never wanted to go anywhere. I never wanted to do anything. When I was at work, every moment that I could, I would just close the door and so I could be left alone. I would cry the entire drive to work. I would cry the entire drive to home. Like two years in just utter and complete grief from losing my dad. You know, you go your whole life with your first word being dada. Having your best friend with you everywhere, all the time, at every moment. And then... You leave for work one day and that's all gone. Somebody else got to take that away. And again, that's that's a different episode for healing. I've I've really worked on forgiveness and understanding. But in the two year time frame, oh believe me, I wish that I could have been alone in a room. Okay. I wish that she could have been put in a room and I could have been alone with her because I just I wanted revenge. That sounds, right now it sounds icky. It sounds gross to me. But at the time, during that two-year period, it's all I thought about. And looking back now that I've healed myself, the need for revenge and the need to not forgive, like we feel a need to not forgive because we want to be right. We want to be better. We want to be above somebody. Not forgiving and the need for revenge is what keeps you in a dark space. It's what keeps you feeling depressed and sad and lonely and angry. I can say that now because it's been, wow, it's been 10 years that my dad's been gone. And so 10 years of healing, 10 years of processing and Even now, there are moments where I get angry and I just scream into a pillow. But I'm I'm working on opening up and talking about my story more. I, I don't really talk about it too much, especially not the dark part where I would take a leave PM to never feel anything. I would go into his room and just hysterically cry to the point where I couldn't breathe at all. I remember one time my friend Brittany had come over to help me with some stuff in my house and she started to go upstairs and I had the biggest panic attack screaming at her not to go in his room because I didn't want anyone to mess with the smell. I wanted it to smell like him. Just being just in the pits of hell, missing my dad. And we did everything together. I mean, there were points where I would eat and throw the food up because I felt so sick to my stomach. I wasn't taking care of my body. I wasn't taking care of myself. But I can tell you that when I started working on forgiveness is when things started to change for me. I started to feel better again. I started to feel like I could live and breathe and want to continue with life. I had my daughter, so of course I had to put on a brave face for her. She was only 17 months old at the time. And whenever she was with her dad, I just, 
I shut myself off. I shut my emotions off. I shut the light inside of me off. I shut everything off. And I became a shell of a person. And I really lost everything in that moment is how I felt. And now looking back, and I know this is hard to say and I might receive some comments, I do believe everything happens for a reason. I do. I do. I, I believe that we choose the way that we're going to die before we come here. I, I, I believe, and I've seen it with my own body, my own eyes, doing mediumship work. I have had so many, so many souls tell me they chose to die that way. They wanted to. That's what they wanted. That's what their soul needed to grow, to move forward. In your human mind, to hear somebody say, well, they chose to die that way. Oh my God, if somebody had said that to me, I just would have punched you in the face. But 10 years of healing and understanding and researching and journaling and connecting to other spiritual mentors, teachers, other mediums, connecting to spirit myself, I know that we choose how we're going to die. Our human form does not like that. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to accept that. But if I think about it, you know, that if my dad had left five minutes sooner, five minutes later, he'd be alive. Why did he leave at that exact moment? If she had been in a different lane of traffic and hadn't zoomed across into the desert, she wouldn't have hit him at that exact moment. I have talked to my dad and he has told me as well that this is how he chose to die. That doesn't make it any easier, and I know a lot of you are not going to like hearing that, but that's my truth. It doesn't have to be yours. You you have to find your truth for yourself. But that really did help me heal as well. When I started doing mediumship and connecting to other souls that confirmed that, many, many, many other souls confirmed that they died in the way they wanted to. They died in a way that helped their soul progress. It's hard to say that in a human body because, you know, we have feelings and emotions that are attached to our loved ones. And we have feelings and emotions that are attached to the way that they die. But it, if it can give you any peace at all, any peace at all, I believe that we choose the way that we're going to die. I do. Now, that's not to say that there aren't disgusting, horrific people in this world that do horrible and horrific things. I don't believe that a woman chooses to die in a horrific way when she's jogging. I don't believe that. Um, so the, I do believe that there are some challenges to that theory, but I do think a, a large majority of us choose how we're going to die. And I know my dad did. He's confirmed that for me. And it, it does help bring me peace. And maybe it'll help bring you peace too if you're having a traumatic experience or if you've lost somebody. But those, those two years of deep, deep healing, trauma, sadness, that void I was in, I knew that I had to change my life. I knew that I needed something. I needed to turn that light back on inside of me. I needed to find myself again. And that night when I took the Aleve PM and it didn't work and I woke up and I saw my dad's flag there, I knew I wanted to find a way to connect to him. I knew I, I knew I was going to do anything and everything I could to learn how to be psychic, to learn how to be a medium. And I thought to hell with what the TV and the books say. If you have to be born this way, I'm just going to work 10 times harder. I'm going to learn how to do this. And come to find out we all are psychic. We all are mediums. We all connect soul to soul. We all are born this way. We've just shut that off. We've been programmed and told to shut it off, so we do. We get TVs and cell phones shoved in our face, video games shoved in our face as a way to keep us distracted. We get religion shoved in our face as a way to keep us distracted. Now, there's some parts of religion I absolutely love. I'm not bagging on religion at all. There are some parts of it that I really love, I really enjoy, but there are parts of it that 
try to tell you that mediumship and psychic work is wrong. And it's not. It's who you are. It's a part of you. If there, So many people are talking about spirituality, talking about psychic work and mediumship work. Why would we all be able to do that if it wasn't innately a part of us? And so I really dove into it. I really, I knew I wanted to learn how to become psychic. I wanted to learn how to become a medium. I never knew it would take me on this path that I'm on, having a business, helping other people step into their spiritual power, their magic. I never dreamed of having a YouTube channel or a podcast. I've always been somebody that if I had to give a presentation in front of the class, you can just give me the F. I'm not doing it. I didn't like having my face be shown. Recording a video, recording my voice, saying my name. And here I am 10 years later doing the damn thing. And I'm just, I'm so excited about it. I'm so happy about it. Like, I just want to scream from the rooftops and tell everybody, your loved ones are not gone. Their physical body is gone, but their soul lives on forever. Your soul lives on forever. They are okay. They are happy. And you can communicate with them. You can talk to them. You can still have them in your life. And even if you don't experience any spiritual or psychic phenomenon, they're there anyway. You have a birthday party, they're there. You have a wedding, they're there. I remember crying hysterically during this void in my life because I hadn't gotten married and my dad would never walk me down the aisle. And that was always my dream to have my dad walk me down the aisle. And I'm never going to have that, but I am. He's going to be there. He will be there if I ever get married. And I want you to know you can step into those powers. I created my business around that to help you understand that you can become a medium. You can become psychic. You can heal yourself. My mediumship has helped me expand my business into healing work, Reiki, quantum healing. I mean, all kinds of things. I love to learn. I will grab a book before I watch TV. I will take a course before I do anything else. Like I love learning. And my whole business is around healing and helping you heal so that you can step into the life of your dreams, whether that be if you want to become a medium, if you want to open your psychic gifts, if you want to heal your body, if you want to know how to step into your power, that's my passion. I love talking about it. I love watching people heal themselves, knowing that they are powerful and that they can achieve and do anything they want to do. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Soul Care Intuitive Podcast. If you are listening on Apple, I do have this available on YouTube. If you prefer to watch it with videos and captions, just go to Soul Care Intuitive on YouTube. I'll put a link in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link to the Apple. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, the link to my website, how to get a hold of me, it's all in the description or the show notes. I'll see you in the next one, my lovely friend.